All right, so here we go. <clears throat> so um, I'll go through these really quickly. Um, and then, you know, we can come back to slides or, you know, you, you can just give me, you know, feedback um, uh, at, at the end. So, um, you know, for those, for, since you guys, you know, know me, you, you would probably guess that these are the kinds of <clears throat> values that I'm interested in. And for me, uh, this is a very value driven thing. I'm not uh, looking to start a venture where I'm going to make a million dollars from it. Although I, I, I would like to see some people getting involved have a possibility of doing that uh, with some of the add-on projects. So um, the internet should be like the sidewalk, right? The, we pay taxes and we and, and we get a sidewalk and, and it connects us and we don't have toll booths. Um, uh, on the sidewalk. Um, and part of what's happening now with money going for broadband, it's like giving people fish, um, whereas others may want to teach people how to fish, uh, as opposed to giving them $50 a month to lower their Comcast bill. Uh, what I'm really interested in is how we can change the fishing industry. So uh, systemic change. And the uh, uh, mission uh, of this group is to uh, improve broadband internet networks by creating a network of people who are gonna share uh, uh, things with each other. So I don't see, I, the chapter will maybe engage in some, some projects, um, but the main purpose of the, of the chapter is just to bring people together who will then, you know, either do projects or actually form other companies that come out of this. Um, so this is a really exciting update that I only just discovered recently. So uh, at the uh, left side, the, the, the little person inside the, the router uh, that's Althea, which puts uh, blockchain software onto the firmware of your router so you can buy and sell um, internet. <clears throat> and they just entered into a partner partnerships with uh, NetEquity. Um, and there's a video that I'll, I'll provide the, the links. And for people who are maybe watching a recording uh, of this, if I put it up on YouTube, we'll put links to a bunch of things down in the bottom of the of the video. Uh, but um, the guy who runs NetEquity has built cell towers and uh, was an ISP in Pakistan. Now he lives in San Francisco, uh, except he's staying in Nebraska for a while now as they're partnering with OPTK Networks, uh, a middle mile provider who has 10,000 miles of uh, fiber. Um, so in the beginning, I was struggling with, well, you know, where do we get our backhaul if we're trying to uh, connect? And it seems like this example of finding middle mile providers might be the low hanging fruit. <clears throat> so uh, what's outstanding about this approach is that, you know, you can set up an ISP for less than $3,000 to get started. Now that does not include Labor. That's just you know for for hardware, but there there are people who you know just did their own little sweat equity to get things started, and then each additional household less than two hundred dollars, and this is using um, a line of sight antennas and radios, <clears throat> and you lower the infrastructure costs by using existing water towers and. and and anything uh, that's tall in Ann Arbor, it might be some of the tall buildings that are going up all over the place now. Um, and what Althea has done, and on, on the left, that's an Althea uh, uh, diagram. So you, you can see uh, two connectors uh, between uh, pairs of, of buildings where there's bits flowing in one direction 
uh, and money flowing in the other direction. So you're buying broadband from upstream and selling it to downstream. And if you get a whole bunch of people in a community you know, doing this, then you won't see the kind of thing that's on the right, uh, where the internet seems to be everywhere, but it's all locked up. Uh, so no more monopolization, no big contracts. Uh, when Comcast goes down, everybody, you know, who's on getting their internet from the, that those Comcast branches, uh, uh, it goes down as opposed to a mesh that could have multiple backhauls. Uh, get rid of exploitation uh, and the underserving of rural and inner city populations. So the advantages of the approaches we're promoting are you know, privacy. So ISPs are now monitoring all of our behavior. That doesn't happen when we're doing this. And uh, a VPN is a standard part of setting up something like this. Smart contracts handle the, bill, the billing. So the people that have been setting up their own ISPs, they don't have to worry about, did somebody pay the monthly bill and, and, and go after them? Um, because people just uh, get tokens to put into their router uh, and uh, they can have a, an app on their mobile phone uh, in order to do that. And with multiple backhauls in a mesh network, you have greater resiliency than single point of failure ISPs and you just pay for what you use. Um, if you go to the store to buy a banana, they don't say, well, you can't just buy a banana, you have to buy a monthly subscription uh, to bananas and we'll send you a bunch of bananas uh, every week and pay your monthly bill. Um, and you can earn money if you're, if you're a relay. If you're just uh, uh, an end node, then you're, you're just uh, paying and you, you have to have um, extra hardware on your roof if you're a relay, but it's not that much more money. So um, on the left, we see you know, the Michigan chapter of the Internet Society, which is what we're talking uh, about here. And uh, I'm looking into you know, how we can uh, network uh, with schools from community high school uh, here uh, in Ann Arbor to Washington Community College uh, to community colleges all around the state. And I'm thinking in particular community colleges because the skills uh, that people can learn to be network engineers and network operators are the kinds of things community colleges should be teaching people. Uh, next is the Broadband Institute. The URL is broadband.institute. Um, I've purchased a bunch of licenses to LearnDash, which uh, enables the creation of online uh, courseware. So I'm seeing that as a P2P platform, uh, sort of like the, the, the Uber or Airbnb of you know, connecting teachers and learners as opposed to connecting uh, drivers uh, and riders uh, uh, in, a, in a car. And, and the scope of that will be global. So uh, I know somebody in New York who's recording uh, videos of how to do an installation of ubiquity antennas. And he said that he'll license his stuff as community commons. And I see most of the work going in there uh, as uh, community commons. Uh, and then the last part, uh, coin commons, community owned internet networks, and that's coincommons.org. There's a website there. Um, and this is all about decentralized, self-sovereign collectives. Um, and you know, not everybody may want to take that route. Somebody might pick up on this and uh, form their own little for-profit ISP that might be an LS LLC with a couple of partners uh, in whatever little town they're in. Um, but I will be recommending that people look at some of the ways of self-governance that I've been studying about self-sovereign um, uh, collectives uh, as, a, as a way to get the community 
more involved in it. And I see this uh, as community uh, building. Uh, so I'll be you know, looking for help in recruiting members uh, to our chapter. And uh, the initial budget for the uh, chapter, uh, I'm looking to keep pretty small. And um, the laws regarding what we do are a lot simpler uh, if the total revenues are less than 50,000 a year. And in, in particular, you know, this year, uh, except for the possibility of a community engagement manager, the web hosting you know, is like, will be a cost of like $30 a month. Uh, and the mini mesh deployment package, which gives you all the parts for, um, from the gateway that connects to a backhaul to what would uh, be installed on one house, that's $800 uh, for that deployment package, which Althea offers. Um, and a community engagement manager, if I can um, raise enough money, you know, for that, and maybe it would initially be somebody, you know, very part-time, like maybe a student who needs, you know, part-time work just to um, keep, as, as people sign up, uh, to be members and people just visit uh, the, the website to make sure that we're engaging those the, those people. Um, so the first project uh, that uh, I thought we might do, uh, and by the way, that's um, uh, Jahan in the picture, one of the co-founders of Althea. I got to meet him in 2017 when he was visiting from the West Coast. Uh, and I was in the same uh, Slack workspace he was in. And when he said he was visiting New York, I said, well, we've got an extra bedroom. Do you want to crash with us? So that's how I first got to learn about Althea. So he's doing a presentation here uh, showing how you know, all you need is this antenna on your roof. This is from, I did a screenshot from a video that he's in um, and have a router in your house. And what I was thinking of was like a slightly larger version of like this dollhouse in kiosk fashion and put some solar panels on it. So it would be wireless electricity um, and uh, wireless uh, internet. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna approach community high school uh, the back of them, since they're right by the farmers in the market there, I think it'd be an excellent place to put uh, a kiosk. I think it'd get lots of uh, uh, attention. Uh, and then try to replicate, if, they, if we can get that to work, try to replicate that uh, around Michigan and get uh, libraries and uh, community colleges uh, interested in uh, replicating the broadband and solar kiosk, Basque Imagination Station. And that's it. <laughs>